Hari Krishna, Hari Bo, Manča Kalpa, all glory so beloved Srila Prabhupada. Well, for days I thought I won't make any new videos anymore. But my inner Scorpio is screaming, tell your truth, express your truth. It's my truth, I don't know. Maybe for some of you it's going to be also resonating with some of you not. But it doesn't matter. One has to express the truth like I do, I feel. I have to say what I feel. My own realizations. So yeah, <clears throat> as I already mentioned and many of you know, heavy constellations in the air. Tomorrow is summer solstice, the longest day of the year, the beginning of summer, at least in the northern hemisphere. <clears throat> but then we have a sun eclipse, almost six hours long. Very heavy with six or seven planets retrograde. Mars squaring the sun eclipse, who knows, knows. But I have listened lately to a few nice astrologers, Western and uh, Jotish. Mm, yeah, they all try to be very kind in explaining us no, it's not that heavy. It is actually the same uh, sun eclipse and many. Mm, constellation similar to the one in 2001, just before 9-11, but like this time it's not going to be that bad. Well, we'll see. Krishna has his plan and has a plan for every one of us. But the topic, the matter or the topic I wanted to address in this video you know, as I always say, you know, I, on Facebook, and uh, and it just keeps on going. I, I, I don't understand. They're still addressing the topic of editing the books. <clears throat> Is it justified? Is it not justified to change Srila Prabhupada's books? Ridiculous, beyond ridiculous. I, I have no words for it. Uh, yes, more and more devotees, all devotees in body, all of course, leaving their bodies. Many got infected with COVID. Okay. Pictures from around the world, from hospitals. And it reminded me, by the way, on the fact that Prabhupada was many times in, in not so good, actually, body-wise, health condition, and he begged not to be brought to the hospital because the devotee basically has nothing to do in such a place who knows knows why who doesn't understand well i will not go into explaining but Prabhupada gave in everything gave us an example either we understand the example or we don't so then again the discussions going on about the guru issue yeah the guru issue um i was thinking i mean i addressed this in many different videos and ways and i was thinking no 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 something is missing i i miss something but anyway everything in its time so i was thinking let's go back as i used to do it uh, over 30 years ago in sanketam book distribution and then people ask you about why so much these different religions and why why you know why why would, if there is a God, first of all, you know, sometimes people ask if there is a God, so why would he give us so many different religions and so many paths? And I would answer, in different time, place, circumstances, uh, by God's mercy, he sent us different uh, 
his pure devotees, servants, to give us, the ones in ignorance here on planet Earth, he gives us a different approach according to our, let's say, awakening or awareness point where we are standing at, uh, our wish and desire to reconnect uh, in our eternal relationship with God, he would send us different, uh, as they call it, prophets or pure, you know, devotees, servants, it's the same. So, he would send us, uh, as most biggest religions, you know, Lord Jesus, uh, Lord Buddha, Mohammed, did I miss someone? Anyway, and of course for us who are trying to follow Vaishnavism, Bhakti Yoga, the Vedas, the Vedic scriptures, he sent us Srila Prabhupada. As in this lifetime, <clears throat> I was born into a Roman Catholic family, thank God not fanatically, as many were around me. Uh, partially Greek Orthodox, but <clears throat> okay. So my knowledge of Christianity is pretty much deep, and um, it came to my mind. I feel actually sorry for all of those who are not familiar or didn't go into research. Not only uh, Christianity, but other religions as well as Buddhism or. Islam, you know, to know, because in when you make, <clears throat> when you do research and comparison, you will find a lot of keys and deeper understanding of where you personally are in your own relationship with God. Where do you want to go? Which path you want to go? Which path... Uh, makes you happy, and this is actually the point, you know. Um, no matter, as Prabhupada also so many times said, which path you follow, if you follow it 100%, you go back home to Godhead. But by 100% following means uh, it makes you happy. That's the point, you know. Our position is when we realize our eternal uh, relationship with God, this is when we are actually happy, nothing else in this material world will ever make us happy. Okay, <clears throat> back to Christianity. So Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ appeared uh, in a Jewish family in the area as we know it as Palestine or later Israel or then and now again Israel. Um, and we know there was the Old, as we call it, we have the Old Testament and the New Testament that starts with Lord Jesus. Those who know the Old Testament is, um, it, how to say that, it shows a God who is very much and very often angry and full of revenge. <laughs> yeah but very, uh, you know, righteous in his anger and uh, revenge. This was the collective awareness of the time when these uh, souls were on planet Earth. Another small side note, those who have done, let's see, a research, you will find in them, especially in the Old Testament, so many, <laughs> in comparing with the weather, so many very similar stories, stories, similarities, some are almost equal, but anyway, I will let to any one of you to do this, you know, comparison or not, it's all for a reason. So Lord Jesus appeared in the time when collectively the people there were ready to go a step further that's how I would say it, you know, in understanding that God is a loving God, full of um, mercy, kindness, 
compassion. And when the people were ready to hear, to understand, you know, when, when kids sometimes, when, sometimes when a kid is approaching a fire and it could be dangerous, a toddler or so, you have somehow to get him away from situations like a fire or others that are, are dangerous. So sometimes maybe you give a little slap on the butt, you know, and okay. But when the kid grows older, five, six, seven, uh, he's already so much aware that you can just tell him things. And the kid understands, okay, my parent, my father, my mother, they tell me this is dangerous, okay. And if the kid is intelligent, it, it will just follow and uh, listen. <coughs> I don't know, maybe. Anyway, for me, this is right now the, the only um, example that comes to my mind. But So when collectively this part was ready, this part of the place, Lord Jesus appeared to give them the loving God and the path how to re-establish the eternal relationship with God. I will not go into Buddhism or into Islam, but the principles are the same. You know, as I said, God sends us servants, pure servants, devotees, to give out His message for those who in that and that area are collectively ready to hear it and follow it. So with no doubt, if you look throughout all religions and uh, paths, you will see their principles, their regulations, their formulas, their, um, there must be, you know, a formula, I mean, uh, rules, regulations, principles that one has to follow in order to wake up deeper and deeper and deeper and it's a never-ending story <coughs> our uh, awakening process even if we call someone a pure devotee you know let's say pure uh, in the way that we have nicely explained you know the difference between a pure devotee and a pure devotee. So we have Nitya Siddhas who are pure devotees who came from the spiritual world uh, who were never really fallen of course but they came by God's mercy to uh, help us in our process of um, awakening and re-establishing our eternal relationship with God. And then on the other hand we have us fallen souls who, through the principles and through the process, um, for example, as Bhakti Yoga, we can uh, evolve, rise, awaken, and become pure devotees. As this old saying, um, there is no saint without a past or a sinner without a future. So, of course, there's always hope for every one of us with uh, the si sincere desire to wake up and following the principles and become a pure devotee. So, uh, where was I? Back to Lord Jesus. Uh, so, as those who know, know, uh, about 300 and something year, years after uh, Lord Jesus' appearance, um, in Rome there was this uh, What's the name? The Council of Nicaea, where the Christians, who became very actually <laughs> huge in number and very dangerous to the king or czar, whatever Caesar or Constantine, um, they made um, a compromise, and in this compromise, they changed the Bible the New Testament particularly, you know, they kicked out so many things about Lord Jesus and put in, you know, and made compromises. The birth of Lord Jesus, uh, 
And anyway, many, many things that just don't make really, really sense for those who deeply, deeply uh, study. Many things become very con controversial, you know. But anyway, uh, there is no, how to say, for those who are sincere, they will always find uh, the path back to God, no matter which path it is. And uh, and also, what came to my mind in my experiences as a few decades, no longer anyway, as a healer, working with people and doing all kind of um, healing uh, practices. Uh, with crystals and other healing tools, also regression. Uh, I, I heard a lot of stories. By the way, I don't recommend anyone to go into, uh, what's the word, hypnosis. No, don't do it ever. Uh, regression is a nice method, but so. And those who read, uh, I don't know, like Edgar Casey. <coughs> those who read, um, for example, Edgar Casey, who was called the sleeping uh, prophet, mm, and many others, um, you know, uh, sometimes it's a bit confusing, you know, because um, people went uh, back and forth, you know, they lived in different, um, of course, uh, centuries and, and, and civilizations and so they have been Christians then they went to India and became kind of a Hindu Vaishnavas or I don't know lived in Muslim areas or Native American or South America you know with, with so the soul journey is a specific one point is we have to go what we have to go to to make experiences I guess and um, in the end of the day as I see it personally everything is part of Krishna's Leela and there are so many things it's just useless to question them of course we, we should question a lot of things point of uh, coming to the point of knowing is questioning you know <clears throat> I always say there are no stupid questions, uh, the only can be stupid uh, answers. I just realized I have background sounds because my Facebook tab is open and I became of the fact that I'm, <coughs> you know, so please forgive me. Uh, it's my asthma allergy attacks right now season. Um, yeah okay where was I again I have to catch the line back uh, so yeah we are going back and forth you know lifetime after lifetime making our experiences in different um, cultures civilizations uh, religion paths uh, it's part of the journey that for whatever reason, comically, you know, since we are time and memorial here on this planet Earth, we we accumulate karma, we clean a little bit, and we go back in another lifetime, and then we accumulate more bad or more good. Karma has to be cleaned out. This is anyway for us Vaishnavas, wannabe Vaishnavas, it's very clear. Uh, the only way to get rid of karma is to become transcendental, to rise above accumulating karma, which means really everything that we do, say, uh, every thought, it has to be dedicated to God. This is the only way to get rid of karma. Otherwise, it's just a continuation of accumulating karma, right? Good, bad, but karma... <laughs> is not good at all. Transcendence is the path. Okay, let's go back to the topic, the matter that I wanted to compare all the religions, the few devotees, the servants that came in different time and places to wake us up and to connect it with our 
Jericho, so-called guru issue in ISKCON. And there's, there's this thing that I don't, again, I don't understand, but I do understand. I said, you know, ignorance, I repeat again and again, ignorance is the root of all evil. That's, that's it, ignorance. And uh, one can be very simple, it doesn't matter in which area of uh, religion path they are following. If you're simple minded, this is the, how does the saying goes? Um, anyway, ignorance is a place, but <laughs> most people don't even understand what that means. Actually, the simple minded souls, you know. They will go back home to Godhead, you know. They have such childlike uh, trust and faith, absolute faith and trust in God. God cannot resist the lovingly simple way of being dedicated to God. They, yeah, God just comes and picks them up. Well, for the rest of us who like to... Who... Uh, but philosophy, speculation, discussing this and that topic and matter, it's its more complicated, yeah. But we are who we are, so okay, anyway, no matter what, we follow our path. But the comparison, let's go, I, I'm gonna try to concentrate myself. Uh, so we have, let's say, Christianity, we have Buddhism, we have Islam, and let's say we have our Vaishnavism. So, as I already in one video mentioned, the um, founder child of Christianity is, of course, Lord Jesus. Then we have Lord Buddha, we have Muhammad, and right here, right now, we have Srila Prabhupada. And if you compare this, only this one, of course, there are many sub, uh, I don't know how to call them, you know, religions and uh, spiritual religious paths, but these four main. Uh, let's look at Christianity. So we have Lord Jesus. He's always in the center. You know, throughout history, there have been... Um, many wars and discrepancies between the Christians themselves, so they're split in a lot of sects. A lot of sects. The only one is a Roman Catholic who acknowledges the chief of the church, which is the Pope. But even the Pope, <laughs> he's just the representative of Jesus' disciple, Apostle Petrus, you know. Not Jesus, not representing, like, he's now the, the one who is in the center and everyone follows the Vatican, I mean, sorry, the Pope, yes, and the Vatican. <laughs> no, Jesus is still the Son of God, for some even God. Then we have Buddhism which the leader is the Dalai Lama. And as they say, when one Dalai Lama leaves the body, he incarnates again and again the same soul, that's how they claim, and becomes the new Dalai Lama. But he's not the Buddha. In Islam, don't even come close uh, to compare anyone with the Prophet uh, of Muhammad, no matter which hier hierarchical position you have in Islam, don't compare anyone, anything to Muhammad, you know, you are that person. So what happened then <laughs> with us? You know, with uh, uh, with Shira Prabhupada, with Iskon, with our some pradaya, you know, what happened? Uh, why? Uh, where this, this concoction, I would say, came from? So, yes, yeah, still the very day we have the 9 11. <laughs> Sorry, no, of course not. 
the 5th of uh, July 77 letter which comes from me close to 9 11 anyway, as a metaphor um, the speculations and going on about Prabhupada's last will and orders over 40 years again and again people are trying to discuss and especially is this uh, I will call them lecture gurus you know sorry I anyway say to myself call myself the Yamaduta whisperer I don't mind if I go to hell you know but I don't mind I try my best to, to, I don't know, to pay back my, as much as I can to Srila Prabhupada who saved my life. I said it many times and this is it. He saved my life, my soul. My soul, that's the point. Saved my soul. Mletra uh, gurus, we are all mletras. I mean, who, who, who thinks of himself being better than a Malaysia, I don't know. Okay, we are not chandalas, we don't eat dogs, as some do in some areas of this world, and even worse, rakshasas and whatever, the cannibalists and so on and so forth are doing, but we are Malaysia. So, this Malaysia gurus, uh, I also said in one of my videos, I don't generalize, no one of us knows who really is, and I'm sure there are some still, at least at least one pure devotee on this planet, who holds the balance to all this evil things going on right here, right now, about the total crash, but okay. So this Mlecha Gurus and their followers to this very day, they, they try to justify, even though it is so clearly at least for me and for many, this last order, Prabhupada's will, declaration of will, it's clear how he put up the structure for the time being when he leaves us in his vapor form. But no, they hold on to this past sentences, words like, you know, holding on to a rock to not fall down the cliff. But on the other hand, they are with no problem editing words, sentences, meanings in all his books. Well, I have to control myself right now. I feel my anger rising, which is not good, but why not? Sometimes anger is not that bad, you know, for extra nature. If the anger is done in righteousness, and this is how I feel, I'm expressing my anger in defending Srila Prabhupada and his legacy in the righteousness energy. To be continued in part 2, Jai Srila Prabhupada.